Vanguard Tactics episode number two. I'm Stephen Box, your host, and today I am joined by the one and only Mark Reed. How you doing, Mark? I'm thank you. Good evening, sir. How are you? Yeah, so now I'm very well. Thank you very well. Very well. Uh, I've got to get you over our new uh, kit, though, mate, so you can look just as cool as me in Indeed, the uh, yes. Vanguard Tactics. Uh, I don't know which it, one I'm pointing. Yeah, kit. Double uh, XL for me, please. Not Thanks. quite the. Uh, Gym regime uh, that you have? Not yet, mate. Not yet. Not yet. Um, I've also managed to get the logo above your head. So. Oh, excellent. And we're live on YouTube. You know the the I love it how every week we're like, right, what can we bring to the channel? How can we make it better? So live videos coming to YouTube bi-weekly because then what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to strip the audio um, and then put it on our iTunes podcast. So if you can't watch it now live, you can always catch up uh, with it um, on, obviously, Apple iTunes. So, Mark, remember, we are live. No swearing, please. Certainly, sir. I've been warned. No problem. <laughs> so, Mark, I'll hand over to you, my friend. What, what's on the menu today? Well, I have a question for you. Uh, that question is hot on everybody's lips, and it is, what have you painted in the last two weeks since uh, we last did the podcast? What have I painted? Hang on a minute. Let's. Uh, are we actually live? I'd really like to check this. Um, it'd be really, really good to know if we are actually live on. Um, yeah, I want to make sure we're actually live on YouTube and not on Facebook because that would be a right nightmare. We'd be on, completely live on the wrong place, wouldn't we? Can you imagine? It'd um, be a cockle. What? It'd be a cockle. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I'll, um, what, what was the question, my, uh, Mark? What have you painted? So, any hobby, um, any uh, stunning conversions? Any uh, any models purchased? Well, I've actually been having some lessons by Cult of Paint, Andy. Oh yeah. And um, so he's been helping me out with the old airbrush technique, um, which has been going really, really well. So I've just been literally, I took a whole new uh, box of Death Watch. Uh, 10 boys sprayed in black um, I've done some cool conversions on my Terminators because I don't really like the old Terminator models so I've done some nice conversions on them with the old Cataphracty or Tartarus Terminators I think ripped off the sort of top part of the uh, which goes over their head, ripped that off and put a Death Watch head in um, and then give them some better weapon options so that's what I've been doing and then I've just been spraying black getting used to using the highlights of the airbrush and then doing some cool blade work so that's kind of what I've been doing for the last week Sounds awesome. Yeah, what about yourself? Um, I am concentrating on um, reducing my embarrassment okay. through painting the remainder of Madrigari. Nice. So we had the uh, battle report that uh, Jack and I were involved in uh, a couple of weeks ago that we dropped that, and um, I'm a man that likes uh, painted models. I can't stand the, the grey. So yeah. I've been working hard on the HQs, nearly completed, ready for the next trip onto the channel. Nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. So, what what were those? What the Farseer, the Warlock, uh, the Farseer, two Warlocks, uh, Homunculus, and uh, I can't remember. And I've got a, a couple of bits of the Talos to uh, tickle up a little bit, yeah. um, and that should be should be looking good after that. Mm. Nice. Um, yeah. So that's a. Uh, we are live on. We are. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, oh, hang on a second. Yeah, definitely. So what? Oh, what hang on a minute. We are. We are definitely live on YouTube, which is fantastic. So at least we uh, did get that right. Um, nice, mate. No, it's going to be good. To, I, I saw one of the pictures that you put up the other day, and that looked pretty um, special. So we need to start getting those on our Instagram feed as well, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Be cool. So uh, I could do with uh, advancing my skills with the camera first, because um, I always say to people. Don't judge this on uh, what I put out because they're always in in real life it looks so much better. Yeah. No, definitely, and yeah. So that's the thing when you get like the lighting. Sometimes when you take a picture so close, it can kind of distort it and stuff, can't it? The brush strokes. Uh, um, yeah. Really. So a big, big part of the hobby for me. Something I get a lot of enjoyment out. You know, if you've got like a stressful job or whatever, it's nice to unwind in the evening with a spot of painting and a battle report. Yeah. Definitely. No, that's it. That's exactly the same. I'll, even if I can get half an hour uh, or an hour, then, yeah, it's great just to kind of chill and, you know, work on a few, you know, and I just set a small task for me because I don't, I get such minimal time to paint. I'll just go, right, I just want to put some, I don't know, edge highlights on five guys and that's all I'll do and then leave it there rather than trying to get overwhelmed. 
Yeah, well, you're progressing. The, the, even if it's just 30 minutes a day, then um, you're moving them forward. You know, over the week, we, we're looking at, like, uh, you know, three and a half hours, something like that. It's fantastic. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we've got plenty of armies um, that we're hoping to put out onto the channel, so there's a lot of painting um, yet to go, so I'm hoping this is putting you under pressure to crack on and uh, get them done. Yeah, well, we've got our um, Trello management board now, but we need to keep track. We sure have. Um, what we've got to try and get done each month. So I think, what have I just, What did I say I'd do by April? Get my Death Watch and Night finished by April? That's the one, yeah. Yeah, so I want to bring them up to a really good standard. Um, my Eldar army is, I would probably say, 75% complete. Yeah. Um, I could definitely go back and do some more like highlights, um, just, just clean-ups, but basically... I would say, yeah, 90% of the army's done, 75% to a, a very good standard completion. So as soon as basically that's uh, my Death Watcher done, I'll just get any Eldar bits I need finished off, and then I can start on the Harlequins. Uh, that will be a lengthy uh, task to uh, get them right. But I'm sure with Andy's help, after we've uh, been on his uh, airbrush course, we'll be, both of us, be in a oh, uh, better good. position to be doing then. Yeah, make them... Them uh, diamonds, mate. Easy. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Stencils, that's what you want. Yeah, stencils. Um, I don't know if we, if you are watching live, if you want to ask some questions uh, to myself or Mark, or even just say hello, uh, write us a comment and I'll see if I can bring it up, because that would be wicked, actually, because you'll be our first uh, comment on... This is the first time we've streamed on YouTube. So, um, guys, I really appreciate it. If you just want to say hi, that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, so, Mark, what's next? Um, we... We are into the now into the meat of the show. Now we've had the starter uh, into the main course. Games um, played. Um, games played. So the uh, what have you been up to the past couple of weeks? Um, what games yeah. have you played? So um, not haven't actually played that many in the last couple of weeks. Um, so what was it? Two weeks ago, I played um, Jack. Yep. And, oh, he's literally just uh, come on now, actually, and said hello. Um, yeah, so we can add the, look, we can add Jack to the broadcast. Look, look, look at oh, that. Fantastic. Um, so what we can do, me and Jack played a game. Um, it was a case of, what do we play? Uh, my Death Watch versus his Orcs. Um, how did that game go? I can't even remember. Jack, how did that game go? Was that a win for the Death Watch? I think it was. Yeah, it probably was. Yeah. And then I played you, didn't I, after? Did you? Yes, you did. Yes, yes. That was the uh, uh, the revenge where I didn't get any revenge. That was it. Because mm. my, mine in Jack's game was the mission with the circle thing where no one gets oh, yeah. a vulnerable save in the middle. Yeah. The chapter approved mission. And I literally dropped all my Death Watch, completely surrounded Jack and just absolutely annihilated him. Yeah, he just but didn't go well for the orcs, and then um, we I played you with a pure death watch list, didn't I? And that yeah. was such a nail bite, wasn't it? It was. I think so. Uh, uh, you got the better of me in the fifth round. I just didn't have enough um, units left to be able to um, do any damage with you. Yeah, and your rolling was as obnoxious as ever, um, as usual. Yeah. And then, and then my other game that I've played after that was against Dan that we've just recorded and I'm in the middle of editing as we speak. So, um, I mean, I've already put in four hours of editing, so um, I probably need another couple of hours and then it will take me probably about 10 hours to get that uh, rendered and then online will be another 10 hours. So it's such a lengthy process to get these videos uh, produced to the standard so that we want to do them at. So we won't say anything about that. We'll let the uh, guys um, watch that when it comes out. Yeah, definitely. But that was Death Watch versus Necrons. And this is our best battle report to date. No, you know, hands down. No offence, Mark. But this one is... Sounds good. Looking forward to seeing it myself. This one's the one. Um, yeah. So we've got new terrain. Obviously, you guys worked hard on bringing that up to a, a, another standard. Um Cult of Pate Andy, um, he's you know helped us out a little bit as well. Uh, I borrowed a few bits off him, um, so yeah, kind of the, the table looks great, uh, the models look good, um, and the battle report itself. This game was an absolute nail biter, and what we did was 
the first ITC mission. So we're going to be teaching you guys, if you want to learn more about the ITC, how to get into it, uh, what is the ITC, and also what are the missions, what do they look like, how do they compare to uh, chapter approved missions from what GW put out. I go over exactly what, I, in my opinion, how you should go about uh, basically designing your list and also, most importantly, picking your missions. So that's what I'm really focusing on is picking the uh, primary and secondary missions, or sorry, should I say the secondary missions because they're the one you get to pick. And then in future videos, I'm going to do one on how to uh, tailor your list to the ITC because it is slightly different. Sounds great, mate. Looking forward to that. Um, yeah, so that should be out live pretty soon, I think. So a couple of games myself. Um, I was at uh, Dan's this weekend and I played both Jack and Dan. I had a rough time against the against the Orcs. Yeah, uh, not that rough actually. The uh, played Dracar against Orcs, and um, I've not played them since. I've not played Codex Orcs, so it was my first uh, first go at them, and I made a couple of mistakes, um, which I now know not to make again. Um, That's what it's all about, I, isn't it? Yeah. I'd, I'd, um, so what were I the mistakes you made? The it was deployment. Okay. So the I or deployment and movement in the first turn. So basically, I I moved up. Um, if the guys have watched the battle report, um, but again, me against Jack, then what we'll find is that, that it's the same army that I took in that battle report. And I'd moved up the Talos, I'd moved up the Grotesques, and I just didn't realise how manoeuvrable those orcs were. Yeah. The, uh, the war trike, the, um, uh, the, he had, uh, stuff getting out of battle wagons it moved so quickly one of the war tracks came and took out uh, one of my ravagers um, which I really wasn't expecting um, mm. so I wish I'd have deployed much more conservatively and held them back to give me another turn of shooting perhaps to um, you know take his um, army down in number before I, I came out and, and smash them to pieces hopefully yeah. um, he didn't have a lot left at the end but he he, he won on points we played ITC okay. I think it ended up at 25-22 something like that oh close um, game then but, yeah. yeah it was it was a really really good game really enjoyed it so if you um, if you have screened a little bit better then do you think you'd have just had that extra you know turn of just shooting and um, got rid of what you needed to then I think that would be exactly it I, I don't know I'm still might have lost you know mm. um, the because uh, he, he could have you know, uh, come up with something that um, it could have moved something, could have jumped or whatever. Nah, but not Jack. The ta- Jack's quite the tactical genius. You, uh, um, I'll give him some credit. Um, <laughs> yeah, but really good, really enjoyed it. And then I played Dan in the uh, evening, and Dan had a uh, had a Imperial soup list. Ooh, uh, um, topical. I managed to uh, do a, indeed. I managed to do a, a fair bit of damage to that, and I managed to kill. I think forty guardsmen in the first turn. Yeah, um, it was looking pretty grim for for Dan after that. Um, he came back hard in the second turn, but um, I uh, I think that I had the uh, um, overwhelming firepower. Yeah, nice uh, game though. Uh, great to see the guys. Really enjoyed it. So, soup is back Brings on the menu. Level. Certainly is, and uh, that's exactly what we're talking about in this live and also uh, podcast. So, um, yeah, Mark, where are we kicking off soup then? So, um, the question is, what is soup? Um, So, I suppose as a definition, um, soup, in a nutshell, is anything or any army that is, I would probably say, more than one... I mean, you, you could take this to different definitions, right? So you could say a soup is an army that is built of more than one army trait. Okay, so uh, you could, you know, even in the same codex. So, for example, you can soup together, for example, a, um, you know, you could have a Crimson Fist captain. um, You could have a White Scars lieutenant and you could have three squads of uh, Black Templars in a detachment. It's legal, but it's not really a uh, pure uh, chapter, is it? Or army trait. No. So you could, you know, define that as soup. However, they are they are obviously all still um, allowed to be used like that because they all share not only just the Imperium keyword for match play, 
but also the abductus astartes keyword. And so because they have that, they're allowed to be used in the same detachment. All right. But they just won't get the black Templars benefits. You can still use the stratagems, which is why people take them. Yeah. Um, or relics and warlord traits from whatever faction, whatever army trait or chapter they are from. So that could be classified as a soup. But typically, what we probably see more often than not is, for example, very much like um, my army with the Death Watch. It is a soup, um, although it is uh, defined as a Death Watch list because. Death Watch contain more than 50% of the points of the army. Um, you can still get away of classifying it as a um, Death Watch list. However, it is a soup, basically, from because it contains Death Watch, it contains um, Imperial Guard. Um, what's the uh, right name for them now? Uh, Astra Militarum, I believe. Astra Militarum, yep, that's it. And then also Imperial Knights. So, um, yeah, I've got three different... I'm basically using three different books in okay. one army from th for three different detachments. Um, so another, you know, your army is a soup. So you've got the Dukari and also you've got the Craftworld Eldar. Uh, so yep. two different books coming together. Uh, so, yeah, a soup could be literally something as small as having... Um, the same army, but lots of different factions all in the same detachments. Um, you could have like a white scars detachment, a black templars detachment and a crimson fist detachment. Same book. I'd probably still call it a soup though, um, to a degree. So there's just levels of thickness of soup, shall we say. So yeah. mine's more like a, a real stew. Um, that's yeah. more like a bit of a, uh, bit of a broth. Water. Watery broth. Yeah. Yes. Like what you get okay. from like Yo Sushi or something, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Miso soup. Yeah, indeed. Just some chunks um, of uh, the... vegetarian tofu. Yeah. That's, yeah, see, we're coming up. Yeah. Oh, we've got some more viewers, by the way. So, guys, huh, if you just excellent. tuned in, welcome myself and Mark. Um, we're just basically chewing the fat a little bit. We've, uh, and this is going to be a podcast that's going to be on itunes very soon so if you've missed the start you can go over to itunes and watch it back uh, once i've basically produced all this but we're talking about all things soup so we're going to be covering what a soup is why you use a soup how you use a soup what you typically see where you might see it how you play against it how you play with it um so all things soup related we're covering it so that leads me nicely on to the next question is why why soup okay so yeah, so essentially you would take a soup for a multiple different reasons, okay? So I'll give you one, for example. What we see all of the time, um, the guard, the, the loyal 32, okay? Um, very similar to that, you've probably got 30 cultists and probably two sorcerers, something like that. Mm. Or a couple of demon princes, maybe. Um, now, that does a couple of things. The first thing that it does is it allows you a lots of bodies on the ground for very cheap. So it's a very cheap screening unit. Um, and it's something that I've just wrote is a how to screen guide, which is part of our new book that I'm put, putting together, the player's guide for 40K. Um, and if you're interested in that, you can head over to our website, www.vanguardtactics.com, and I'll send you all the information about how you can get that screening guide. But basically, it is just a case of cheap chaff uh so that when you get alpha strike or beta strike from uh deep strike you've just got something there to go cool well you can hit a guardsman that's mm -hmm. not a problem and then you can hit back with your more elite troops so it's basically a protection la layer essentially so that's why you might use a soup um another reason why you might use a soup again with the guard um it just allows you to take a very cheap battalion so it allows you so for example with death watch they're very expensive in terms of um their points value so you don't really get that many cps but they are a potentially cp hungry army uh very similar to imperial knights a uh, Castella Knight, very like one of the top units in the game at the moment, needs a lot of CP investment to keep him, you know, punching. Whether you're re-rolling ones or you're uh, rotating iron shields, to do that every single turn, you need a lot of CPs, and you're not going to get that if you went from a pure knight list. So, chucking in just 32 guardsmen, all of a sudden that's an extra five CPs that might allow him to rotate iron shields for another two turns. Okay, so yeah, it can help you dramatically with bringing on more cps to the table 
You might do it because there's some cool warlord traits and relics. So let's take, for example, the Eldari. Um, yeah. There's a really cool relic that you can give one of the warlocks to allow him to reroll powers. Super powerful. Okay, um, and with that as well, um, when we look at like the El- the craft world soup, which is your list. Yeah. Very strong firepower from the disintegrators on the ravagers and the flyers. But they're only strength five. So when you combine that with doom from the psychic power uh, from the craft world, all of a sudden it goes like I won't still. This is a yours like uh, goes together like what, Mark? Uh, cheese and crackers. Che- exactly. Doom in uh, disintegrator ca- cannons is literally yeah cheese and crackers. So um, they just go so well together when you're re-rolling hits from the warlord. You're re-rolling wounds from doom, um, and then you probably even put jinx on it. So if they have got an invulnerable save, it's even worse. Beautiful, right? So it can fill gaps. So, for example, in Dakari as well, they've got no ability really um, to deny any psychic powers. Yeah, there is one relic, but I, I haven't used it. You, you're yeah. going to use that relic for um, Rate the Living Muse or something, so you can re-roll uh, exactly. once the wounds, you know. But putting in the uh, Farseer and the Warlock, now you can deny. So if you're going up against another Yanari list, or you're going up against um, Magnus, or Thousand Suns that are strong at the moment, you can just go, nope. You know, you've got a chance to play in that phase. Um, um, sure, there's, there's one uh, one thing I would uh, have mentioned as well about this, is the um, the reason why I've gone for uh, suit myself and put in uh, the psychic support is because... The, I think one of the most difficult things in the game at the minute is having a balanced army that on one end can deal with knights and on the other side can deal with a horde. Yeah. So I've tried to um, I've tried to balance that out so that the um, uh, my army can deal with both, which is something you're going to see in tournaments, something you're going to see in um, uh, playing your local club, whatever yeah. you know. So and I think it's a diff- that's a difficult question to answer. It's a difficult uh, task to complete. Yeah, definitely. So there's so many reasons why you might plug in a soup. Um, It could be literally um, the reason why I've got a knight in my Death Watch list is so that he can kill other knights. Because in the game at the moment, on the tournament scene or at your club, um, you never want to list Taylor to the point where you're literally going, oh, I'm playing against my mate and he's got orcs. So do you know what I'm going to take is is much like rapid fire or, uh, you know, loads of shot weaponry. You want to take an army that can fight against anything. So if your mate also brought knights, you could also compete. So sometimes, like my Death Watch, are pretty bad at killing knights. So I need something to deal with knights. So by plugging in a knight into that list, all of a sudden makes it a little bit, that matchup, a little bit easier. Um, We've got someone who's just, uh, Rogel Dawn has just said, um, I've just started playing uh, pure custodes at the moment. So that's, again, very, very elite um very very elite army so again like with that you know adding in um so i played against um a wonderful guy last year called jeff robinson uh, he's very very good player and he essentially took custode guard and also an assassin and that was his mm. soup so that literally had some mortars i think uh, just as a bit of like non, because they don't need line of sight, just to chip away. He had also um, 32 guardsmen just to move, 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 grab objectives, be a screen. And then he had um, three units of five custody bikes with a couple of shield captains. Yeah. Um, and he also had an assassin, which um, gives me or gave me, should I say, a minus two to cast powers because custodes then they don't really have any psychic defense. So just plugging in that assassin all of a sudden made it much harder for me to cast my powers because I was running an Eldar at the time. So, um, yeah, that's a really good uh, strategy to, to put in with the Custodes because all of a sudden the Custodes can deal with Horde or whatever. Um, or you might find, actually, you really struggle against Knights. Um, so you might want to put a Knight in with your Custodes. So, yeah, there's yeah. loads of different options there. So just to recap, the reason why, fill a gap that your army doesn't currently have, extra CPs, um, or a cheap screen. Yeah. So um, soups have become very, very prevalent recently. Um, and we would say there's three, maybe three or four main areas which you should see them. Um, can you give an example of some of the, uh, some of the lists up there, some 
some of the things you might see at a tournament or, um, uh, you know, in your local club? Yeah, so one of the very common lists I would say that was probably um, very prevalent a few months ago was um, 32 or more guardsmen. Then uh, two to three Blood Angel Smash Captains. Yeah. And also, and with that, probably Mephiston. Maybe even some Scouts as well, some Blood Angel Scouts. And then a Castellan Knight and potentially two Helverins as well. So something of those mixes. So there was a combination of Knights, Blood Angels, Guard. That was a really common one. Or it would be guard, and then before that, probably go back in July, the really great uh, list um, that Manny Chima used to run, um, who's a good friend and also one of the sponsors. He works for Glasshammer, who sponsors this uh, show. Um, he was one of the top players in the ETC in Croatia, won so many tournaments with this list. It was basically a guard, I think brigade, I think he had some sentinels in there, a couple of old grins, um, he had some hellhounds, um, and literally, that was literally just a bubble wrap and get board control of then uh, to protect th- uh, two smash captains, Mephiston, and also three uh, custode shield captains on Dawn Eagle jet bikes. So the characters so- sort of hop forward, do what they need to do, jump back, be annoying, yeah. and then the guard kind of soak up any uh, smites or whatever, mortal wounds or any anything like that. They protect all the characters, obviously. Get board control. Yeah, really good list. So um, other soup lists, we've mentioned one already because I run one. Um, it's yep. the Eldari one. Uh, there are other um, uh, options to that. I've seen uh, Drakari in there. You plug in usually three Ravagers and they are con. Yeah, so you can you have w- Harlequins in there as well. Yeah, so typically if you're running like a mainly... Dark Eldar list with Talos uh, Ravagers. You just plug in the Supreme Command from Eldar, like like you've done. Really good list. Or what you do, you could kind of reverse engineer it. You can uh, in what was very prevalent, uh, probably a couple of months back, really uh, was Yanari. Uh, so you'd have the Cat Lady, yep. Dark Reapers, um, then two units of Shining Spears. And then you'd plug in some rangers for a bit of a screen, warlocks, farces as you needed. Um, And then you plug in three ravagers as well with an archon. So that's also very, very strong as well. But it's all um, kind of on the same mix of doom and disintegrator cannons. And then you've also got uh, what I ran, which was pretty successful at Battlefield Birmingham. Um... I can't remember how I did, but I won. I made one silly mistake. I was top player until th- game three. One silly mistake, and um, anyway, kind of lost me the tournament basically. But essentially, I was running the Incarn, who is a Yunari character that can pop up anywhere, and I had spears, shining spears, dark reapers, and I had harlequins as well. So yeah. the harlequin jet bikes uh, from. The Incarn, he can cast on them to re-roll ones to hit, which is really good for them because they've got no other ability to re-roll hits. And their Haywire cannons are brutal because knights were everywhere. So they were just brilliant. Six of them, D6 shots each, re-rolling, hitting on threes, re-rolling ones, any fours are mortal wounds, fives and sixes, sorry, fives are mortal wounds, sixes are D3. Um, and then because of Doom as well, I'd get to re-roll all the ones, twos and threes. Mm. So really, and then you get within... Uh, you know, seven inches to soul burst of that night, you blow it up and you shoot the next one and kill that one as well. So that was really good combining the Harlequins again with Doom because that is such a great power. So that shows that that can be successful as well. Yeah, very successful. Yeah, definitely. And then obviously Um, you've got like the Chaos options then as well. So Chaos can take Renegade Knights, um, like another list uh, that I I fought in two tournaments back to back. Um, Actually, same opponent as well. Mm. Lovely guy um, is basically two Renegade uh, Knight, Crusader Knights, or kind of equivalent. One had double uh, fusion cannons, the other one had double... um, Avenger Gatlers, and then um, he also had a Castellan Knight with Magnus. So yeah, just Magnus in three massive knights. Horrible. 
Um, and you, you might see like demons as well as cultists and Abaddon. Um, and then you might have some like uh, Magnus in that list as well. So you've got some Thousand Suns with some Chaos. Um, yeah, loads of different options there. Okay, so if we were to talk about the uh, Imperium one in a little bit more detail, if somebody thought, um, I-, I fancy running one of those, you know, yeah. I I, uh, uh, I want to take a step up, something a bit more competitive. Um, what other options, Imperius, Imperium wise? What would be a good little uh, good little list for them? I mean, it depends on the base. I think you need to go with whatever you love the most, like love the aesthetic of, whether it's Grey Knights, Custodes. Crimson Fists, Black Templars, Death Watch, Guard, or whatever, right? You pick your core. Yeah. Then what you would do is look at probably the tournament scene you compete in, or what you might come up against a lot. So, um, and I don't mean list tailor specifically to beat a certain opponent, but there's a difference between ETC style missions, which is a combination of uh, book missions from chapter approved the maelstrom and eternal war or maybe you play in, you know and, and every time you play you just play maelstrom at your local yeah. club or every time you play you just play progressive scoring or you play itc missions whatever it is um so you can tailor to the missions that's cool because you can still have a very balanced army tailoring to the missions um so i think that's your base and then from that's that point you can start to uh kind of work out from it so um great actually a really good one so we'll go with regal dawn again he said um he's up against dark eldar a lot what would you recommend to counter them with my custos is adding in allies the only way so against dakari um Again, if they're running a soup, then you might need some counter psychic ability. So what you could run is some Black Templar Scouts. Okay, so Black Templar yeah. Scouts, really effective. Three units of those, um, and literally just put them upfield, and they have a stratagem that they can use on a four up. It just shuts down that psychic power. So that can be really... So if you were playing against Mark, he was running his like, oh, I'm going to doom this. You're like, no, four up, no... Yeah. It's like a kind of, and then you would have to try and vect that. So that's costing you four CPs to vect his. No, you know, do you know what I mean? It, but yeah, yeah. either way, you either don't get doom off or you just waste four CPs. That's true. I think because of the uh, the uh, points increase to doom from three to four, and also from Jakari's point of view, you really need to have five. You mean um, you, roll that you one, mean agents of vect, not doom? Yeah, agents of vect. Sorry. sorry. Um, if you you really need five because if you roll that one then you've got to be able to CP re-roll it. Yeah. Um, the so you're gonna block that. You're gonna maybe spend four, maybe spend five. Mm-hmm. That is most of your command points gone. You yeah. know, like this. So you can't do it twice. So I might get doom off one turn, but the next turn you just roll it again. Yeah. Um, do the same exactly the same thing. So that's an option. Um, you could do the same. You could run sisters as an ally because I'm pretty sure they have a very similar stratagem. Um, I need to look through the chapter approved codex a little bit more. That's just come out, but I think there's something very similar. Um, the other option is literally um, if you've got like bikes and stuff like that, or maybe like the regular um, custode warriors or, or guardians, should I say, put in some tank commanders. Okay, 72 inch range. Or even greater if you run them as Vestroyan. Um, and you literally sit them at the back and you hold, you know, for maybe two turns, you just hold back. Because um, what you can then do is outrange the Disintegrator Cannons. You just go, right, turn one, they might move forward to try and get in range. They doubt it, it's 72 inches. You, What's your range? Uh, what's your threat 36. range? And then 36. how far do you move? 14. 14. So what's that, 50 inches? Yeah, but also what I would say to that is that um, you're going to be cautious about pushing them up the board because they're they're, they're a bit of a glass cannon. They're yeah. fairly brittle. You know, you want to protect them. So uh, I'll probably and, boost them 14 straight from the off. And you've got to keep them within six of the Archon to get all the buffs, right? Yeah, so that's right, absolutely. you could literally go, right, corner-to-corner corner deployment, put them as far away as you possibly can, pick them off, bang, bang, bang. You know, if you got rid of two, all of a sudden one... One of them by himself then isn't going to do much. It's when there's three. That's a problem. So, yeah, you could outrange them. That's what you could do. Uh, so you could plug in something to do that. Or the Castellan Knight, for example, you stick him in, outrange stuff. But um, and the other thing is you could put knights in. But when people play knights, they are far too aggressive with them. They're like mm. running them forward. But if you know you're playing against, let's say, Yanari, who want to doom you and jinx you, well, jinx is only 18-inch range. 
Doom is only 24, so you could just stay well out of range of that because they're not want to. They're not going to want to put their farces in warlocks that close and hammer. Even if they're on jet bikes and move them so far forward, they're not going to want to put them there because obviously they'll just get shot next turn, and that means they've used one psychic power for like 250 points. It's not really worth it. So um, you can literally just deny that. Um, so you, that's another option is to basically outrange them with something like that shoot them off the board or get rid of the and again target priority is really important and we can do a whole different uh, live show and podcast on target priority which we probably will at some point but yeah get rid of the things that are basically going to kill you also um what we can say is that i've currently got my brand new custodes on me on the painting table nice. so um you know, in uh, that's a good idea for us. Maybe we can do yeah. uh, Drakari against Custodes. Steve can run the Drakari and I'll run the Custodes. And that's, and, uh, that's um, actually something, Mark, what you've just picked up there. Uh, Rogel Dawn, if you would like us or like me to play your army, then if you go and subscribe on Patreon... It is going to be one of the new tiers. So you can, on our Patreon page, and it basically helps myself, Mark, Dan and Jack keep this channel going and, you know, pays for the petrol for us to meet up and, um, you know, helps me just like produce everything, get new terrain and stuff. That's what where we put those subs, by the way, or that um, uh, sort of, uh, what would you call it, like sponsorship maybe? That's yeah, sure. Probably yeah. a better word. Um, yeah, we, we want to put that to good use. Uh, we want to grow the channel, invest back into it. Um, but we want to offer that because I don't think anyone else is offering that service at the moment. So you can send us your list and I'll play it and I'll see how I get on with it. And I'll say, look, this works really well. This doesn't maybe think about changing that. Um, so yeah, I could literally run, um, yeah, that. And then we can put this up against Mark's Dakari and we can see how it gets on. So we've actually, um, we've actually had another question, which is uh, on, on topic from JP gaming. Uh, sorry. JP Wargaming, what are your opinions on assassins like the Vindicare in your lists? So I think assassins are quality. Um, it's a bit annoying that they don't get any extra. So if you're not familiar with assassins, they're, they're imperial or imperium um, allies, essentially. There are four different types of assassins. Now, the only problem is if you take three, I don't think you get the extra CP for it. I, I'm, I need to... I need to look at that, but you don't need to take a HQ with them. You can literally just run um, three assassins, or you could run one as an auxiliary detachment. Okay, but it's a bit annoying you don't get the extra CP. But don't quote me on that in case I am wrong. However, there's four uh, four assassins. One of them is great in combat. He's got like a three D six inch charge at about eight attacks. I think he's called the Eversaur Assassin. Pretty good, mm, quite yeah. handy. Um, then. You've also got one, which is the Vindicare Assassin, which is really good at... He's got, like, a long-range sniper rifle, can do some damage. Yeah, to that's me. right, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Different um, ammo, I think. Uh, various different ammo for different situations, from what I remember. In my opinion, I think he's the worst, because he's never going to kill a character in one round of shooting. Mm. You might be lucky to kill a Warlock, but it's so situational... If you had three of them and you really committed to having three on the table with maybe some sniper scouts as well, you're like, right, if you bring a character out, he's dead. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Bring Gulliman out. I got 30 sniper scouts. I'm re-rolling hits in ones to wound or whatever, or they, they've got Celestine or something like that. And you've got like, I got three Vindicares, 30 scouts with sniper rifles. You put a character out, he's dead turn one. That's scary. Um, and then you've got the other assassin, which I really like. So this is one. Um, I can't remember the name now. Is it um, the Calexus? The Calexus, yeah. And then you've got the Calidus, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So I don't know which one's which, but one of them is the anti psycho one, which I think is a minus two to cast within like an eighteen inch bubble of her or something. And you can only hit that one on sixes, so that's pretty yeah, cool. That's right, yeah. And then the other one, which I really like. Um, can deploy like I think it's d6 inches plus three away from you. Um, some so it can actually get quite close. But the great thing about it is that it makes you spend an extra CP per stratagem that you spend on a four up. So all of a sudden, your agents of Vect could cost you five CPs, or it makes like your single. Yeah, it makes your single CPs 
all of a sudden cost two, which is pretty powerful. So um, I think there's a roll of a four up or something that you need to roll. But don't quote me off this at the top of my head. You'll need to look at the codex. And by the way, that's the other thing, guys. There's so many podcasts out there, so many videos. We make mistakes. I don't know every single rule off the top of my head, nor does anyone else. So if you ever, like, make sure you double check it and cross reference it from the book don't just go oh steve from vanguard tactics said this so it must be true no do your homework check it it's a good message yeah so um assassins they can be great like the anti-psycho one fills a role if you play against yanari quite a lot um I've got a question for you on that, actually. Yes, mate. How do you how do you plug them in? So you know, how do you get them uh, uh, battle forged? So you the... li- so you can either spend one CP yep. as a um, like your third detach. You can, you have to take him as his own detachment. You know, you can you can spend one CP and take whatever you want. Yeah, you could do that, or you can take three, and that is the um, what is that? Is that the Vanguard detachment where it's three elite? Uh, options I'm not certain we'll have to check that one out so, but you can basically use that one can you and it's, uh, it doesn't cost you a CP does it yeah but you don't get one either so normally you know okay. if you, you know you know, normally if you take a HQ and three elites you yeah. you, you get a CP I don't think you do which is a bit of a uh, but you don't have to take a HQ you just take three assassins yeah um, so and I think you can that. take up to six yeah I've seen that um, build quite uh, it's become popular with custodes. It's usually, uh, you know, the, the custodes suit quite a bit. Um, yeah. You're going to go a loyal 32, sit at the back, sit on objectives, give you 5 CP. Yeah. Um, then you go at custodes, mainly bikers, maybe some wardens with Trajan Valoris. Yeah. Um, and then you're going to plug in some um, uh, assassins, like the one that, that you mentioned with the, the psychic screen, massively helpful because the uh, Customs don't have any psychers. Yep. And if you're up against Lord of Smite, if you're up against Eldar, you're up against uh, Ariman, something like that, it's going to help you survive a bit longer, get into close combat, because that's, yeah. that's where they want to be. Yeah, definitely. So, um, they, yeah, they can be good. Um, what else do we see quite a lot of? I think three tank commanders is good. Mm. You know, three Imperial Guard or uh, Militarum tank commanders with battle cannons and... Um, uh, you know, maybe like a Laz Cannon, that's what I like, keep them pretty cheap, just yeah. three of them hitting on threes, um, you know, wounding most things on, even knights on fours, everything else on threes, minus two, D3 damage, D, you know, double D6, you can put orders on yourself, or you take the one which gives you like 40 shots or something. Um, so yeah, three of them, they're pretty cheap tanks for what they do, really effective, toughness eight, 12 wounds, great range. That's a really great plug-in. Um, yeah. What good. else? What else is good? Um, obviously, you've got the Blood Angels. Uh, so the Smash Captains are really popular. If you struggle to kill knights, for example, um, you could easily just plug in th- uh, two, maybe Smash Captains and three squads of Scouts. Uh, so if I was running Custodes, maybe you do that. Two Smash Captains because they they can basically redeploy uh, for I think it's two CPs, and then what they can do. Um, is then if they landed that turn, so they have to come down from Deep Strike or the Redeploy stratagem, you can then spend three CPs, I think, or t- or two CPs, to have a 3D6 charge move. It got changed in the FAQ in the summer, so you need to check on the clarification. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it could be a four CP investment, like two to Redeploy, two for the uh, 3D6 inch charge. Uh, but he's really good as well because he gets an extra attack. So he gets four attacks basic. You probably gave him uh, the one the one CP stratagem to make him death company. So he's now got five attacks okay, on the charge. He's then um, re-rolling ones to hit. He might have a relic. So you can either ignore overwatch or it does the extra damage. So you can take the one uh, or the hammer that basically is no modifiers to, uh, to your hit roll. So yeah. he, all of them are great. Either you're not getting overwatched and you're re-rolling charges, that's great. The extra damage or the, obviously, no um, penalties to hit, all, all are good. Um, so he's got five attacks. Then you spend one CP. So he's he's in combat now. You spend one CP and he gets D3 extra attacks. That's great. Excellent. Um, if you had him anywhere near Mephiston, I think, I think he can cast that on somebody else. I think... 
I know he can definitely cast it on himself for an extra D3 attack, so I need to look at that spell. Um, so I'll quickly try and do that now. And anyway, so by that point, you've got, you know, maybe up to eight attacks if you rolled well, or even on average, seven attacks. Um, and then depending on if you can cast that power for an extra um, couple of uh, another D3 attacks as well. Um, he's also three, P- three CPs. He can fight again. Or if the knight kills him, you can spend two CPs and fight again. So either way, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, so where is it? The I've got it here, actually. Uh, sanguine, sanguinary discipline, quicken. Okay, so quicken, if manifested, you can add three to the advance and charge rolls you make for the psyker. So no, you can only do that on, let's say, Mephiston. So Mephiston could go in with his attacks, extra attacks from the stratagem for D3 extra and the power of quickening. That's cool. So Mephiston is an absolute beast, uh, which is why he's so popular. So you could do that or the Smash Captain could get about seven attacks anyway, um, fighting fighting twice. And that's enough to kill a knight because he doesn't get the invulnerable save in combat. So we've uh, we've been over the um, the what is soup and why do you soup, yep. and um, then we've uh, we've talked about the the three main soup types, which are Eldari, Imperium, and Chaos, and then we've gone over a bit of um, in a little bit of detail over the uh, Imperium. So we're saying about the Imperium, if you want want to uh, go against, you know, if you want to go your own go for soup, you can have Loyal Thirty Two, mm-hmm. you can try Custodes, you can try Grey Knights, you can try um, Death Watch. It's Death Watch. Um, maybe even Space Wolves. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll we'll try that at the weekend. We just um, put a we'll horrible see. list together, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Um, so maybe that will work. We'll we'll uh, that'll be a, a battle analysis you'll see in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Yep. Um, see if we can make them a bit more competitive. Um, you know that you've got some options, and like you said, I think it's a good idea rather than saying what is what is the list that everybody's playing to make your own list that you really yeah. enjoy playing yourself that's something a bit different yeah so at the weekend this is a spoiler must, I'm going to go up and see Mark you, you live just outside of Leicester don't you I sure do um, and I'm down in Bath so it's about a three hour drive but I'm going to come up um, myself and Mark we're going to uh, plan our game and we're going to play an ITC style mission I'm going to be running Harlequins with some soup and you're going to be running Space Wolves with some soup. So we've got two soups. It's like double yep. broth. It's like Campbell's yep. versus Heinz. You didn't tell me. I thought you were going pure Harlequins. You've, you've unveiled this to me for the first time as well. But Maybe. You let that cat in the bag. Um, I've, well, I'm toying with two lists at the moment. The Incarn, yep. I just love how he pops up and just messes stuff up. And I know how much you hate him as well. I so. just hate how he pops up, yeah. He's, I'm like, oh, that's died. Yeah, he's popping up there, killing you. Yeah. Oh, that's just died. Popping up, killing you over there. Oh, I killed something. Soul burst. And I know those words send shivers down your spine, mate. So this is what they do. I don't <laughs> want to be hearing them this weekend, thank you. Uh, so we've had another quick question from Mikey. Running 20 Death Watch, 10 Stalkers, and 10 Storm Bolters, um, as a two man and one ten man squad as ch- as a cheap battalion the problem is HQs are expensive do you think chaplains are worth it at four points less than the captain no chaplains are awful just run the watchmaster is a boss you have to take a watchmaster um, he's so good reroll all misses because remember that applies in overwatch as well that applies in overwatch so the reason why he's so powerful you run like, like I run um, like the sort of list that I, hopefully I made famous um, what I see everyone running now is um, basically about nine Death Watch boys um, seven of them have got Storm Bolters you've got 30 uh, and then you've got one Terminator so it's 32 Storm Bolter shots at rapid fire range and a Vanguard veteran so they're fearless you can fall back and still shoot next turn some Storm Shields in there um, obviously against Orcs which are really prevalent now um, they've got a stratagem I think it's one or two CPs I can't remember off the top of my head but basically when they charge in for every model you kill in Overwatch they remove one inch off their uh, charge range so normally I kill six so you've got to make a massive if then if they've de jumped and they need an let's say they need an eight all of a sudden they need a 14 on two dice it's not happening 
So Jack loves that one. That's his favourite. They just—you've got thirty orcs there. They're minus six, and they just stood there like, and we failed our charge. And you're like, "Yep, now I'm going to hit you with thirty-two shots, re-rolling all misses, wounding on twos, take them off the board, mate." Brutal. So, um, yeah, the Watchmaster's quality, and then you just need a captain with a jump pack and a storm bolter. That's all you need. Even a close combat weapon is fine. I take a power maul for four points. I think it's worth it, but. I didn't really think the Smash Captain was worth it for Death Watch, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, what we're going to do is uh, Steve, our resident tactical genius here, is going to put together an Imperial Suit list, or maybe even two, and uh, we're going to send it out to everybody that's on subscribe to our email list. Yep. So we'll probably do that in a couple of days' time. So mm-hmm. if you're not subscribed, please go to uh, vanguardtactics.com. Uh, just sign up there. It costs you nothing. Um Give us your email address. You'll be on the email list. We send email like once a week, twice a week, maybe. We'll put them list in there and then give us some feedback. You can always reply to the email and tell us what you think. Yeah, I send you my night cheat sheet as well. We send you the list that um, as soon as you subscribe, I send you the cheat sheet that I use for night. So it tells you what warlord trait and what relic to take. If you're depending on what army you play as well, which is really cool that I use when I play in tournaments, and also um, I I send you over my list that I took pre chapter approved, to, uh, which went undefeated with my Death Watch soup list. So um, um, Mikey's just come back to us and said he, I have a Watchmaster and a Captain already in the list. Um, best thing to do then, mate, if you if you want to run double battalion, um, maybe just put another Captain in with jump packs. Uh, when I played Mark, or you could put a Librarian in. That's a lot more useful for Null Zone or a deniability. Um, so I was running in my pure Death Watch list um, basically one Watchmaster, three Captains with jump packs. You could swap one of those for a Librarian. Or in my pure Death Watch list that I'm going to try is basically a Watchmaster and then three, three Chaplain Dreadnoughts with twin Laz Cannons because they hit on twos. So they're pretty cool. And they can't be targeted as well, so you've got like a little walking gunboat. But I tried one with the assault cannon, wasn't very good uh, the other day. Actually, a bit of a waste of points, but three with the twin Laz might be better. What's the try? You can always find a friend, proxy it, see how we get on. Yeah, find a friend. So, have we got any other questions from our Patreon listeners? Uh, Patreon subscribers, should I say? Uh, we certainly have. Uh, we had a, So, we'll uh, before we answer this, we'll just say that we'll... Uh, We'll sort of draw the uh, soup to a close slightly here, and then um, we'll answer any questions, and then we're going to sort of uh, uh, go off air there. So we had a question from Matthew Wright today, and he said, uh, this is aimed at you, Steve, obviously. You're obviously a very good player. Uh, so I'm wondering what things you tried to keep in mind during your first games upon getting back into the hobby that develop your skill. To put it another way, what should a new player look to get good at the game be thinking about mostly during their games? So for me, the most, and I've always given this advice, is basically start with a battalion, okay? Start with two of the most fundamental and basic HQ options that you've got, and probably ones that give you an aura buff, like a captain and a lieutenant, brilliant, or an autarch if you're playing Eldar, um, a Chaos Lord, for example, right? Something that allows you to re-roll stuff is really good. It then teaches you to basically use your troops really well. Because if you can get a lot of leverage out of your troops, um, I won a lot of my games when I first started playing 40k from literally knowing how to deploy and how to move. So again, the how to screen guide that I give out, um, I literally show you, um, I think every different type of battalion that's pretty cheap to run for every army um, and how to use it you know, turn one, turn two, turn three. So how do you get the most out of a minimal investment, okay, from just two HQs and three troops? Um, So once you've learned how to basically deploy and screen, the rest you can start to put in the middle and you can start to put around those buffs. So if, let's say you're taking Eldar, okay, you take three units of Rangers or Guardians, Mm -hmm. all right, as your screen. You've then got an Autark in the middle, And you can literally plug in whatever you wanted. You could plug in Dark Reapers, Falcons, uh, uh, Wave Serpents, or um, Fire Prisms. That's what I was looking for, Fire Prisms, or uh, Crimson Hunters, right? And literally, you just dart them about within that six-inch range of him, and all of a sudden, and then you put a Farser in the middle, and one CP is re-rolling ones to wound, so he acts like a lieutenant. Mm. That's great, because you can literally keep everything safe, push forward with those troops and then 
The other advice I would give you is settle on a thousand points. Keep a thousand points exactly the same and then experiment with um, or let's say you start off playing 1500 point games or even 1750. Maybe keep uh, 1250 points or a thousand points exactly the same and you just tweak maybe 250 to 500 points of your army every single game. Don't just throw up the whole thing out and put a whole new thing in. Stick with the same army. Understand how it works. Understand how far it can move. Understand the threat ranges of all your units. So that way you're really just going to nail home, regardless of how good we or anyone else says a particular army is, the best players know their army inside out. And are able to use the like Death Watch before chapter approved was awful. They've got the lowest win rate in the whole ITC, something ridiculous like that. Um, whereas I just rocked up with them because I play them all the time and I studied it and I went undefeated with them because um, I know how that army works. So although I played against much better lists, um, you need to make sure that you know how to play your army, and that's really important. Like you could give me any list, I think I'd run it for six months. Or you give me an army book, right? Whatever you think's dreadful, give it to me for six months, and I'll probably, you know, do pretty well. I'll come in the top half of a, of a tournament table, uh, maybe even top ten with it if I had six months dedicated to it. So yeah, just keep it simple, learn how to play it, and then leverage what you can, and only tweak and change small things. Sounds like good advice. Thanks, mate. Yeah, I hope uh, that's uh, that's helpful to uh, uh, Matthew. Yep. No, definitely. So, guys, uh, Mark, thank you so much for uh, obviously coming on and hosting this show with me. You're welcome. Um, and also, uh, guys, if you want all those goodies that we spoke about um, and you want to find out more about how to get your hands on the Player's Guide for 40K, then head over to VanguardTactics.com. Com, subscribe with your email address i'm going to send out a weekly newsletter i'll send you all those goodies straight away and then i'll tell you how you can become a patreon if you want to keep supporting myself mark dan and jack um, at vanguard tactics and then also um, if you want this player's guide as well i can tell you as well how to get hold of that okay um, and if i haven't done that by the week someone email me and just say steve how do i get hold of a player's guide and i'll shoot you over a link in how you can purchase it um, it's really affordable um, i'm br- i'm up dating it every single month um so this isn't just a kind of a book that you're going to buy this is basically going to be like a living um player's guide so as things change i'm going to spend the time or we we're going to spend the time to adapt it change it and bring it up to a current standard as well so i want this to be the go-to source that you use when you're playing your games there'll be cheat sheets guides there's like maps that show you how to deploy all that kind of good stuff um yeah it's what the Game developers don't tell you, basically, is how to win the game. Yeah, so um, that's, that's, that's fantastic. A um, couple of ways to interact with us as well. Uh, we've got a Facebook page. Um, we've got uh, Instagram um, uh, account. And that's we, just called uh, The Vanguard Tactics. The we obviously on YouTube, and then what we you'll see that all the videos we've only tried to do the best we can to um, answer all the comments and uh, use the information people give us. Uh, if you listen to this on iTunes, then you can um, go to the website, sign up, and then just send uh, an email to us and let us know how you. Uh, what, if you've got a question or you know is something you're interested in us covering or games you're interested in seeing something like that. So all those ways to interact with us. So um, recommend you you do that. So anybody that's watching this after it's uh, post live if you like you know just shoot us a comment below and then yep. we'll uh, try and go back to you no definitely and guys thank you so much for coming on live as well on YouTube um, if you've enjoyed this let us know and then we'll do more of these um, because we can then just uh, strip the audio stick it on um, uh, Apple iTunes so guys thank you so much for watching tuning in uh, to Mikey uh, to JP Wargaining to uh, Rogel Dawn um, Jack Downing thank you so much for obviously your comments and also a massive thank you as well to our Black Shield Patreon uh, we only have I think 30 of these spaces um, on our and Ian Pitkin is our Black Shield um, Patreon. So thanks for Ian for, you know, that's our kind of like highest tier. So thank you so much um, for your support, my friend, and also everyone else who is on the Patreon. Yeah, excellent. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. Guys, take it easy, and we'll see you uh, soon. And a couple of days, next video will be dropping. So check that out. Um, Subscribe so you get that notification when it's dropped, and uh, we'll be with you soon. Take it easy, guys.
Catch you later. Thanks, Mark. See ya, bye.